Hello children, today we're out in the dry scrubby habitats of South Florida in search for dragonflies, damselflies, grasshoppers, and butterflies. So let's see what all we can find. We just so happen to be right next to this red saddlebacks, which is an immature, but has not yet developed the bright red coloration. However, the limited black at the tip of the abdomen, plus the lack of any metallic purple in the thorax and face can easily eliminate similar species. This is quite a common species in South Florida, the red-veined pennant. Because this is a female, she does not have any red coloration on the veins. But as you can see, the bases of the coastal veins, or the very top vein on each wing, are bright yellow. And this is especially noticeable on the forewings. This, along with the relatively small size, is how to tell this species apart from this similar species called the ornate pennant. Now this is an immature male, so it has roughly the same coloration as a female. These two species are much easier to tell apart as adult males. But as you can see, this ornate pennant has a completely black base of the coastal vein. Some ornates might have a little yellow stripe on the coastal vein, but that area is never completely yellow as seen in the female and immature males of red vein pennant. Also, because ornate pennants are a little larger, their wing venation is a little bit more complex. This right here is the southern yellow-winged grasshopper, a member of the genus Arphia, which is a very hard genus to tell the species apart in. However, thankfully, the southern yellow-winged grasshopper is the only species in that genus that ranges down far south to the point where I am. The southern yellow-winged grasshopper is a pretty monotonous-looking grasshopper. The entire body, when rested, is entirely dull brown or grayish. There are some outliers, including ones that I've seen that are entirely almost black, or this one that is a bright reddish orange color. In flight though, this species makes a very loud crepitation or vibrating sound with its wings, and the bright yellow hind wings become visible. This was my first time ever getting a close, in-hand view of the Atlantic bluet. While it was not a lifer, it was my first time ever seeing this species in South Florida and I was still extremely excited to catch one. This is an immature male, so even though the blue coloration isn't fully developed yet, you could still use his cerci as a way to identify this to species. The color pattern on this species is almost identical to that of the very similar familiar bluet. This is a fully matured male, and I'll go ahead and use him as a way to tell the species from familiar bluet. So the Atlantic bluet has much smaller cerci, versus the much larger cerci on familiar bluet. And that's basically it. Females of these two species are unidentifiable and are best identified based on the surrounding males, as these two species have not been known to breed in the same ponds, and tend to prefer slightly different habitats. This is a southern oak hair streak, a really exciting find for me because not only is this the farthest south I've ever seen one by far, it is also the farthest south record, on iNaturalist at least, ever of this subspecies, and species in general. The southern oak hair streak is the subspecies of oak hair streak that is present in mostly the southern part of its range. However, there is a bit of overlap between the northern and southern subspecies' range. The northern subspecies is not present at all in South Florida. Southern oak hair streaks can be easily identified by that large bright red marking near the edge of the hind wing that runs pretty far up the hind wing. Now this right here is my most exciting butterfly find in a while. This is my lifer, Carolina satyr, a species I have been looking for for over a year, especially concentrating my search for this species at this spot. The Carolina satyr is an abundant flyer in northern and central Florida, pine forest and scrub flatwood habitats, blending in perfectly with the leaf litter and sand at the bottom. However, these kinds of habitats become less and less common the farther south you go, and in Palm Beach County, this species isn't necessarily an abundant species at all. This species is almost completely identical to the intricate satyr, but that identification is worth an entire video itself. One difference though can be seen on males when they open their wings, and thankfully this male opened its wings. Carolina satyr males have a well-defined dark area, which is created by an abundance 
of pheromone-releasing cells called androconia, 